So the first few things I'm going to do here is get the shifter lever off, the kick lever, uh, get my sprocket off, I'm going to take my flywheel off, I'm going to get my piston off the rod, and then I'll just pull this side cover on the clutch side off. So give me a minute and I'll take care of that, and then we'll get back into it. So I just want to show you how effective it is to have a power drill with the impact feature on it. And put some downward pressure on it. These all come out with these. So when it comes to popping off your clutch cover here, uh, you know, you can use, gently tap it with a rubber mallet. But what I like to do is just use a flathead screwdriver and use the standoffs here for the foot pegs or over here near this drain plug. There's some casting area that you can use for a little leverage. Uh, this back uh, engine mount you can use if you want to just start to get the case to move off because usually it's glued on pretty good uh, I just find using these as an area to get some leverage and there's usually a little bit of the casting from the cover that sticks out you can catch the lip of it so we'll use it here so now we got some of that lifted here you can use the castings gently pry it up. So I just find that it's a good effective method. There you go. So here's a, a spot notorious for people saying that they strip out their screws. Uh, it's happened to me before um, but like I said when I use my uh, Milwaukee impact drill battery operated drill I've basically reduced the chances of having these strip out even you know I used to have problems when I used my impact my vessel impactor with a hammer I sometimes would have stripped out heads of these screws but I'm just gonna show you how effective again it is to have a battery operated impactor so this is like this is a number two JIS bit Put a lot of pressure down on the clutch itself and let the tool do its job. Just gently, you don't want to over torque it. Just kind of tap the trigger a few times, it will break it loose. But I think the key is, is making sure you embed this bit as deep into the, um, the head of the screw to ensure that you're not going to torque out and strip it. out. There you go, I got all three of them out. Less than, you know, it took me 10 seconds to do it and nothing stripped so I'm not re-drilling or tapping, which I see a lot of people complaining about. So I got the horizontal engine totally broken down. All components were cleaned and inspected for the internal workings. What I have left is the clutch cover case and the two center cases. I'm just going to kind of show you what I do to get these cleaned up for the multi-step process and uh, you know kind of how laborious it is to get them cleaned up to the point where you know you see some of the pictures of my friend's finished projects so uh, I'm just going to kind of tag you along in the process. So I removed the seals and the uh, transmission bearings uh, first stage is let's get some gaskets off I'm just going to use a scraper 
and this is a very important stage to get all, not only get all the material off to get to the casing but also to take your time because you don't want to mar this finish or the mating surfaces uh, or you'll have some leaks down the down the road so this is a very this is probably the most time consuming part of the process or one of them is to get all the surface cleaned off uh, so I just kind of try and work gently make sure I'm not taking any metal off I'll use a combination of the straight edge blade I have a power tool I use with the 3M Rolock bristle brush and sometimes I use aircraft remover to help soften the gasket material if it's really adhered uh, onto the engine case itself uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get all the gasket off from all the cases here so I've gone over the cases it's probably been about 25 minutes 20 minutes or whatever uh, with the razor straight edge that's about as much as I'm comfortable taking off with the razor blade there's still some embedded uh, gasket material on these cases here so I'm gonna take this opportunity to use my 3M Rolex bristle brush and we'll clean off the rest of the uh, gasket material just a note on this tool that I am using is a KD tool number 2106 it's an old vintage scraper I got off eBay for about 10 bucks but it's awesome that's the first time I used it today I usually use my hand in a straight edge but this extra leverage and stability of holding the blade for me uh, I definitely noticed working on the gasket removal so if you can find one on eBay I highly recommend it it's made in the USA so it's just a nice tool collapses nice and compact all right so let's use the bristle brush start removing off some of this leftover gasket here I got this on a low speed not giving it much pressure at all just letting the letting the abrasive disc do its job without trying to cut into the aluminum Just keep moving it around so you don't stay in one place doing a good job of removing uh, the stubborn areas of the gasket. I just didn't want to use a razor blade and uh, have a chance of scarring up this surface. So I'll, I'll just continue on all the other cases with this. So about 40 minutes into the job, got all the cases cleaned up, gasket material off. Next thing I need to do is use some degreaser, um, maybe a wire wheel to get kind of this initial crud off here, off of this case. So on to the next step. All right, so we'll do the wire wheel, and then I got a wire wheels set up of a bunch of smaller mandrels with uh, some bristles and different styles for all the nooks and crannies so I'm gonna wire wheel all the crap off the case here and then uh, we'll see how it looks I'll tell you how long it takes me